I will now show some of the organs in the abdomen. Uh, to start with the stomach. This is the anatomical position of the stomach. This is how to hold it in anatomical position. That means how it is in my body. I am holding it as it is uh, in my body now, like that. It has got two ends. This end is called cardiac end and this end is called pyloric end. Okay. I will keep it here. If you see here, this is the cardiac end and this is the pyloric end. Pyloric end is thick, it is hard because of the presence of a sphincter, an anatomical sphincter called pyloric sphincter which is formed by the hypertrophy of circular muscle coat. Whereas here the cardiac end is soft because it just has a physiological sphincter. We don't have much of hypertrophy of the muscle there. And uh, this end of the stomach is situated at the level of 11th thoracic vertebra. And this end is situated at the level of first lumbar vertebra. Transpyloric plane passes through this end and uh, it is at first lumbar vertebra. Then there are two curvatures to the stomach. This is lesser curvature. Here, this is the lesser curvature. And this is the greater curvature. This is the greater curvature of the stomach. Lesser curvature has a deep incisure here or notch. Incisura angularis or angular notch. You can see the angular notch there. And a line passing through that divides the stomach into two parts. This larger part, this part, is called cardiac part and this is called pyloric part. The part of the stomach that lies above the level of cardiac orifice here, this is called fundus of the stomach. This is the fundus. Fundus lies above the level of cardiac end and normally that contains air. Okay, then this is called body of the stomach. This part is called body of the stomach. Then this part is called pyloric antrum and this part called pyloric canal. So we have fundus, body, pyloric antrum and pyloric canal as the parts of the stomach. A little bit more about the lesser curvature. You see the lesser curvature here and this is the place where lesser omentum is attached and within the lesser omentum we find the branches of left and right gastric arteries. Here the right and left gastric arteries anastomose. This is the left gastric artery. You can see the artery here. Left gastric artery anastomosis with the right gastric artery. Corresponding veins will be there along with that. And some lymph nodes and some amount of fat also is present along the lesser curvature. Then here is the greater curvature. It gives attachment to a fold of peritoneum. And that fold is called greater omentum. And this greater omentum has right and left gastroepiploic vessels. So any vessel running close to the greater curvature here would be right gastroepiploic artery and any artery running here along the greater curvature is the left gastroepiploic artery, the anastomose here in relation to the border. This is the anterior surface or anterosuperior surface of the stomach which is related to the left lobe of the liver and anterior abdominal wall whereas this is the posterior surface of the stomach and it is related to the structures what are known as the stomach bed structures bed of the stomach uh, which is made up of left crust of the diaphragm splenic artery splenic flexure of the colon left colic flexure left kidney left suprarenal gland and pancreas. These are all the structures forming the bed of the stomach. Here the stomach is open. This is the interior of the stomach. And if you see inside, empty stomach shows folds. And these folds are called rugae. These are the gastric rugae. Most of them disappear when the stomach is full. In this stomach we don't have any rugae. Uh, that means the time of death the stomach was full. Here stomach was semi-filled. That's why we have some rugae there. And upon closer 
examination we can see some pits there what are known as gastric pits on the rugae or between the rugae we see some small holes these are the gastric pits and through these pits the gastric glands open into the stomach 